Ouch! Stop, you stupid cow! We're there! Wow! Grand old Luxor. But I was told it was livelier somehow. Hello! Welcome to Luxor, the most beautiful city in the Orient. Uh, hello. I... We have a beautiful groomed lawn over there, and back there, further sightseeing attractions. Right, but... Oh, it's getting on. Mustache, see you. Hmm, strange people here. Hey, wait a minute. She robbed me. There she goes. Everything's gone, except for... Right you are. I'm still here. And now get a move on. We've got to find the portal of the gods. A true fireman's equipment. I've opened the lunchbox. A tasty cherry with a very hard cherry pit. Oh, for God's sakes! The Pharaoh's daughter has published a photo love story with me as the leading man! Impressive! Firmly locked. Ah! The Camel's Friend. Pointers for Professionals. Issue 2. Hey, I've detached the right hand half of the whistle. Speed Camel Shipping. If safe and fast do what you need, then lightning fast can do the deed. What can we ship for you? Oh, please. No slogans. They make me sick. Well, I wouldn't mind giving it a rest either, but the marketing contract is very clear about it. Oh, that face looks familiar. Just not so, uh, sober. Oh, dear. You're not from the Cairo Municipal Authorities, are you? Uh, yes. In fact, I am. Asil, Office for Public Order. Listen, this is all a huge misunderstanding. All right. So I did sleep it off once in the Pharaoh's Palace Gardens. 
and it might have been me under the table at the Wild Mummy now and again, but basically, I'm just a well-behaved Luxor businessman who enjoys observing his civic duties. My wife must never get wind of my little escapades. Red Sea Aquarium, you old boozer! So there's actually a sober version of you too? Of course. I'm an upright fellow through and through. At least here at home. Which, incidentally, is exactly my problem. Don't you have any deliveries I can take care of for you? Far away, at best. To Cairo, or to the Pharaoh, perhaps. Can you tell me how to get into the poor district? Well, oh, no sweat. I can organize all that for you. You'll be there in no time at all. Hey, remember, I'm the one who knows everything and everybody here. All you have to do is organize some way for me to skive off. So, you want me to get you a delivery? Oh, yes, please, please. My wife is driving me nuts. I've always wanted to know something. How did you ever get that odd name of yours? Actually, it's a bit embarrassing for me too. After all, what kind of man is named after his mother? But when my father suggested giving me his name, Dead Sea Aquarium, he knew his chances with Red Sea Aquarium weren't good. Your mother? Exactly. Now do you understand why I don't want to talk about it? I certainly do. Anything else you want to know? Well, yes. What was your grandfather's name? Black Sea Aquarium. Are you happy now? And your great-grandfather? He answered to a less imposing name. Sargasso Sea Aquarium. Now that I've told you all this, will you finally leave me in peace? Hang on a sec. Do you have any brothers and sisters? A twin brother called White Sea Aquarium. Really? There is a White Sea? Yes. It's a sidearm of the Arctic Ocean. We had to learn all this by heart. Satisfied? A man like you surely has children. Two little rascals named Bering Sea Aquarium and Caspian Sea Aquarium, after our Nordic forefathers. Are you finally done with humiliating me? Definitely. Thanks. Who's that you're talking to? Unimportant business partner. Your three boozing bosom buddies are no business partners. No, no, um, it's the, um, Pharaoh's personal buyer. What? What? Pharaoh? I don't believe a word you say. But yes, I... I'm supposed to deliver otter noses to Cairo. Yes, exactly. Otter noses. Where is the merchandise? The young buyer is going to bring them any minute now. Well, I can't wait to see them. And tell Rassel Bar he should wipe his feet first the next time he comes here. Of course, darling. And tell Rassel Teen to keep his trap shut. As always, darling. Ah, the camel's friend. Pointers for professionals. Issue one. Hey, I've detached the left hand half of the whistle. Huh, only the ball is missing now. A shame it'll only come with issue number three next month.
Hold it! So, that's what's going on. Um, what? You're the piece that's missing in my puzzle. The old saying has rung true once again. The perpetrator always returns to the scene of the crime. Perpetrator? If I had my way, I'd take my luxurious spear and run you through straight away for your insolent deed. Unfortunately, it was confiscated. We can't have you hurting children all the time. Blah, 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 blah. You can hardly say it's my fault when the brats steal dates. Somebody's got to keep them on the straight and narrow. Well, anyway, that's why I was transferred to indoor duty. Which means that now I can spend my time solving mysterious crimes. The only thing I'm allowed to do now is snuff out people who want to leave the scene of a crime in a hurry. By any chance, do you want to leave the scene of this crime in a hurry? I'm more the type who prefers leaving at a leisurely pace. What a shame. Be that as it may, you'd be better off proving your innocence to me quickly before we bring our luxurious methods of torture to bear. Luxurious doesn't sound that bad at all. That means they come from Luxor, not that they don't hurt people. Oh. I'm no accomplice. I'm from Cairo. That puts the general suspicion on you, no matter what. What brings you to Luxor in the first place? I'm helping an invisible, murderous mummy. Such a pity that just this once I happen to know that you don't mean that seriously. I am dead certain that there was an accomplice. After all, modern sarcophagi can only have been opened from the outside. So, if it wasn't you, then who was it? I don't know who it was. In that case, you're still my main suspect for the accomplice. I was robbed, and the thief raced through here. In that case, contact the officers from the robbery squad. Well, anyway, that's why I was transferred to indoor duty. Which means that now I can spend my time solving mysterious crimes. The only thing I'm allowed to do now is snuff out people who want to leave the scene of a crime in a hurry. By any chance... Do you want to leave the scene of this crime in a hurry? Not the slightest sign of a getaway here. What a shame. Be that as it may, you'd be better off proving your innocence to me quickly before we bring our luxurious methods of torture to bear. Could it be that you mean Luxorian? But it's all one and the same. I don't want to be a bother. But I have to get by. That's impossible. That's the scene of a crime and cannot be disturbed. But that girl just ran by, too. She robbed me. Such a nice lady. I can't imagine that for the life of me. And besides, she probably lives there. Of course she can go by. What kind of crime is supposed to have happened here anyway? A tricky case, indeed. But I've nearly solved it down to the last detail. Look at that. The poor victim is lying here. An overturned cart is over there. And ha! The key. We've got an empty, open sarcophagus. Uh-huh. So what do you think happened? How can you ask? It's about as clear as the day. A mummy broke out of the sarcophagus and strangled the cart driver. Then it fled into the alleys of Luxor. You piece that together well, my dear colleague. Oh, do you really? Well, to be honest, I might have a few doubts about how the crime occurred. So, what kind then? The card is from a sarcophagus delivery service. What makes you so sure of that? It's written in big, broad letters right on it. Just because I can't read doesn't mean that people can tell me anything they feel like. Mummies are dead. Accordingly, they can't strangle anyone. What makes you so sure of that? Well, to be honest, 
There has been a sprightly mummy here and there in my... Ah, there you go. But those were all cosmic strokes of fate and incredible coincidences. No coincidence is as crazy as life itself. The driver's not dead at all. What makes you so sure of that? He's snoring. Oh, that could also be the last twitchings of a corpse in its death throes. Is that enough for you? You don't say. So you really know your way around reconstructions, do you? Then do tell what you think is supposed to have happened here. This really is a hard case to crack. Ha! Now, all of a sudden, you're trying to talk your way out of it. I could almost believe that you are the accomplice, the front man, the third man I'm still searching for. I'm going to keep an eye on you. I really have to head off now. I'll keep an eye on you. Plenty of advertising for the Lots of Luck Casino. A dancer seems to be the big attraction. How can you bang on my shop at such an ungodly hour? Ungodly hour? Of course. Who walks among the living in the light of day? Human beings? No. Nobody. Luxor is not a city of the day. It only really comes to life at night. What kind of accent is that? It's very strange. Strange? I spent five years at the Ecole des Accents de la Haute Cuisine in order to perfect my speaking like this. Every chef worth his salt in Luxor talks like moi. And our trade union is going to push this in all of the world. Trust me. Well, Olga, our cook in Cairo, actually, she speaks pretty normally. Ah. Only the lower-class barbaric cooks live in Cairo. Why isn't there anyone on the streets in Luxor during the day? <laughs> How can you ask this? Luxor only lives at night. It is pandemonium then. People come from all over the place and spend their money in Luxor. At my place, for example. But aren't you worried that Luxor might lose its identity? Don't you worry. The great Luxor will never fall prey to any ridiculous tourists. Not now, and not in a thousand years. I've been robbed. What a pity for you. They robbed me recently, too. My pair of bellows disappeared, but it was old and filthy anyway. I hope the thief blew all the soot into his face. I must find a portal. Oh, you lost it. Not exactly. I, uh... When in doubt, you will find everything you have lost in the dirty neighborhood to my left. Because one of its inhabitants nicked it. Maybe that will be the case for this port Monet of yours as well. It's called a portal. Whatever. Those thingies you were baking smell delicious. I call them... biscuits. But they pale in comparison to my other specialities. Oh. That sounds interesting. Could I see that? I have so many of these cutters that you can have one. Be my guest. Oh, the pest. I presume you are not intending to buy anything this time either, are you?
So why isn't there anyone on the streets in Luxor during the day? <laughs> How can you ask this? Luxor only lives at night. It is pandemonium's end. People come from all over the place and spend their money in Luxor. At my place, for example. They gave up the entire city to tourism? Don't you worry. The Great Luxor will never fall prey to any ridiculous tourists. Not now, and not in a thousand years. You know, that box of otter noses back there... Indeed, a delicacy whose recipe I guard to the death. The only thing more important to me are my baby crocs in pastry. The absolute it! <laughs> Ew. Baby crocs in pastry? That's... somehow... My best product. Except that they are already out of stock again. Oh, I hope I will get new ones in time for this evening. Are you saying that somebody should get you new baby crocodiles? Oh, that would be wonderful! I made a portrait! Water. Again. Water. Again. <whistles> a well-equipped camel. It even has a fire brigade badge on its helmet. As expected, it starts drinking. This should work. But it's my beloved companion. I have regulations I must abide by. Your regulations don't allow you to save a sweet little furball from a tree? My regulations forbid me to leave my post. But it... Hello? Problems? You could say that. This gorilla refuses to climb up my tree. That's not typical of gorillas. 
Mrs. Chippy has been sitting up there since this morning. Do you want me to persuade him? Uh, better not. Judging by his foul mood, he hasn't had any breakfast yet. Mrs. Chippy? My cat. She's a crossbreed of an Egyptian pharaoh cat and a royal Bengal tiger. Sounds precious. Whatever. Mrs. Chippy climbed up the tree in front of my house this morning. And she's been sitting there mewing miserably ever since. She's scared of heights, you see. I was always able to lure her down again with one of those wind-up toy mice. They worked very well. But this time it didn't work. And then I lost the mouse, too. You're lucky. I'm an old hand at rescuing cats. You are? No offense, ma'am, but you don't exactly look the part of the storybook hero who rescues cats from trees. Or people from burning buildings. Or the world from God's Gone Mad. Hey, little lady, don't you... Ah, forget about it. I'd need to see tangible proof that you're a professional cat rescuer. Surely a strong man like you can climb up and down that tree in no time at all. Here, look at that. What? You're a fireman? No kidding. It's you! Why didn't you say so straight away? Here is the garden key to my property. Mrs. Chippy is sitting on the tree next to the merry-go-round. I'm sure you'll take care of it in no time. Meanwhile, I'm going to give this lout a piece of my mind. There isn't anything I could wind up here. Let's see how the wealthy and beautiful live. I've got the ball. What kind of lunatic planted it that close to the merry-go-round?
bullseye. Water again. Water again. Fits. Risky, risky. I ought to go check and see. The dancer's cat. These things are called nets. You can scoop leaves out of pools with them. Won't take a minute. Here you go, your cat. Oh, thank you so much. Here's some small change for you. But don't gamble it all away at once. A single gambling chip. How incredibly generous. Isn't that peachy? We race around Luxor all day long just to have our noble Mr. Cat Saver bring the beloved pet back to the lovely dancer in distress. And in the end, the reward is a warm thanks and one whole gambling chip. So, when is this gentleman thinking of finding the portal of the gods? You can't do anything but grump, can you? How about some constructive criticism for a change? Constructive criticism? Ha! You'd better hurry or I'll tell your charming girlfriend that you spent the whole day gallivanting around Luxor on behalf of a scantily clad dancer. I got the point.
I'd park this firefighting camel here if it wasn't so stubborn. That's better. Camel chewing gum. It smells really, really odd. Gooey stuff. Once you these things are called nets, you can scoop leaves out of pools with them. The threads of the net are far too thin. The crocodile would chomp right through them, and then I'd be rid of a handy item. The crocodile has gotten its teeth into the chewing gum. Now I can take it along. Mon Dieu, what is that? A little crocodile? But you said I was to bring you baby crocs. But I did not mean for you to catch real little crocs. The poor thing. But your baby crocs in pastry. Those are little cucumbers in a roll. Not these cute little croc babies. What is your problem? You are disgusting. Oh, just great. All I wanted was some of your otter noses anyway. Here, take the otter noses. I shall set the croc free out in Mother Nature, where it belongs. Hmm, well, with some people you just can't ever get it right.
here are the otter noses you wanted. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Let's meet on the boulevard tonight. Then I'll help you get into the poor district. Fine. See you tonight, then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And back in 54, Ra was so desperate because he didn't get a tan in Giza that he smeared his face with shoe polish. <laughs> hey, it could happen to anybody. But nobody back then was as hot about getting a sunbrown tan as you were. <laughs> Behold, I am Ra, the sexy sun god. <laughs> But the girls really dug it back then. Oh, yes, back then. How I miss the good old times. We've put on quite a few years. If you ask me, I think Isis still looks as youthful as she did a thousand years ago. Anubis! When did you turn into a charmer? You used to lock yourself up alone in your room and listen to that dreadful Nubian drum music. Don't tell me you even drink wine these days. Oh, come on. Things haven't gotten that far. As the inventor of beer, I've got to stay faithful to my favorite beverage. If you ask me, somehow you're sort of stuck in the past. Ah, oh, look who's coming through the door! Seth, that whippersnapper. I heard he wants to win this time, whatever it takes. I'm surprised he even dares turn up here after that dubious incident last millennium. Oh yes, that really rattled my poor Osiris. I shall win the battle of the gods and rule over the Egyptians! Ha! Don't bite off more than you can chew. Yeah, when it came to grand words, you were never slow getting a mouthful. But you certainly did find yourself a great suit of armor. And it's so true. Batik really has gone out of style. You'll see, all of you. No one can stop mighty Seth. No one! <laughs> 